Another big Pineapple Express storm is threatening Southern California, but it's not here yet. So there's still time for a Sunday afternoon showdown. There's between number 11, CLA, and number 18, Arizona, as the Bruins celebrate their annual Pride Meet inside iconic Poly Pavilion. The Pride Meet is known to be a fan favorite, and with UCLA hosting this meet, they continue to try to make the world a better, more loving, and accepting place. A lot of reasons to be inside Poly today. Two teams ranked in the top 20, and another capacity crowd live on the Pac-12 Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Watson alongside former UCLA star Janae Honest. We sat here a week ago, and UCLA had gotten off to kind of a slow start. So I asked the question, what's wrong with UCLA? Well, an hour later, they had posted the fifth best score in the country. So now I ask you, are the Bruins back? They absolutely are back. And like I said before, UCLA has always been on that trend of a steady incline. So I would say today their focus needs to be to have all six routines hit. Last week, they had a couple falls that they didn't have to count, so their focus should be have all six athletes hit so they can just drop the lowest score. By far their best meet last year, season high on all four. Their lowest score was a 49-3, and they really put it together individually. They had 11 scores of 9-9 or better, including one from the fantastic freshman, Caitlin Rosen on vault. And this freshman is a force to be reckoned with the complete package and that is the reason why she is in the all-around she has the difficulty consistency artistry and has even grown in her leadership and she absolutely should remain on the watch list Rosalind uh, who grew up locally said her her dream growing up was to someday have a floor routine at UCLA and now that dream has come true for her Pac-12 Freshman of the Week. Arizona, undefeated first time in six years. They returned 15 veterans from last year, including Allison Fears, who already has career highs this year on three events and the all-around. And this is a homecoming for her this meet, being from the Temecula area. She is also in the all-around, and her most improved event is vault. She's doing very well. She moved into the anchor spot on the balance beam, and they're really looking for her scores to pop this season, and she is an athlete with high productivity and low maintenance. Last week, the Cats put up the seventh best score in school history, hitting the 197 mark. Jim Cats have arrived early, and the Bruins bounce back right on time. It all makes for an interesting afternoon. Number 18, Arizona. Number 11, UCLA in Westwood, live on the Pac-12 Network. But that's a famous Bruin bear on campus. UCLA ranks from the Commons. If you come to Poly, you're probably going to go out there and take a picture with your kids. We've all done it. Arizona comes in at number 18. And for the Gym Cats, they're ahead of schedule. It's been kind of a slow burn for them. And they reached the 197 last week, but they're ahead of schedule. This is a team that usually peaks much later in the season. But look at their marks from week one through week three. Arizona has gotten a step better each time. I guess last week you could call it a leap as they got up to 197. Now they want to build on that and prove that it was no fluke for UCLA. Those 196s early on kind of confused us a little bit, but the 197, 825, Janae, I think that's who UCLA is. They should be 197.5 every time out. Oh, absolutely, and I think coming back home and competing in Poly Pavilion really helped with their energy to really get their bearings. You know, competing on the road can be really challenging, especially when you're on the road off the bat in season, beginning the season. So I think finally they're home and they're like, you know what, let's show the world what we can do and really show our potential. Yeah, the Bruins and everybody has a, a home court advantage, but for UCLA, it's, and to me, there's a real emphasis for this team, especially when they close on floor in a close meet. And we might have that today. So Olympic order home team UCLA begins on the vault. Second best in the conference, sixth in the country. They have a three different gymnasts ranked on this event. Campbell is fifth, Harris is 13th, Rosen is 37th. But we start with Emily Lee. Emily Lee, a career high earlier this year of 9 9. Pacheco Paul, really good in the air. She's really learning how to dial in on that landing. Very clean. I love it. They call her the Lee Doff. Get it? I love Emily it. Emily Lee. I like that, too. I saw that, too, and I thought it was a typo. That was Eliza David, the SID. She always sticks in little Easter eggs for us. <laughs> I love that one. Make it my own. Arizona begins on the bars. Fourth in the conference, 14th in the country. They have nobody ranked in the top 50, but they are averaging 49-2 as a team. Emily Muller starts. She's coming off a season high on this event last week against Stanford. 
beautiful release connection right there. She did a toe shoot into a huge tapacha. She was way above the bar. She has very clean form, yet aggressive. She attacks each skill. You can see in her tap, double layout. Just a little hop back. So she's had three routines this year. Everyone has been nine, eight, or better than nine, nine last week, and we'll see what they give her here to open the meet. Meantime, Emily Lee rewarded with a nine, eight, and it brings us to Paige Anastasi. And for Paige, I think her only event on her program today, the vault. Yep, and you can see by the start value, she did go for the 10.0 vault last week with the one and a half, but they're gonna keep her out of full. Pretty big hop back, but really good vault. She could tighten up her knees just a little bit, but that's good to see her in the lineup and hitting a routine for UCLA. Did she not get enough punch up the table here? Is that why the big hop on the landing? No, I think sometimes when you really just need to squeeze your butt and open up your hips so you can prepare for the landing, you see she kind of piked down a little bit, which causes you to hop back. But hey, she's a freshman. It'll come. It always You'll does learn. here, yeah. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get from freshmen. Some of them show up ready to go. Others take a little time to develop. Muller gets a 9.75. Here comes the super senior, Malia Hargrove, in her fifth season now in Tucson. And Hargrove three times has gone 9.8, including a 9.875. Very smooth swinger, very clean, very solid. Clear hip directly connected to a Takacha. She's gonna end her routine doing a full out dismount. So she's doing a twist at the, in the second flip. And she found that landing. Hargrove scheduled to go in three today as usual. You'll see her on vault and floor. A little balance check here, a little, a little pinwheel. Little pinwheel, yes, a little swing of the arms. So 9-8 for Lee, Anastasi, a 9-7-5, and here's Rosen, who we talked about at the top. Rosen, a freshman from Texas. Had a couple of career highs already on vault, 9 8 fives. Very powerful, very dynamic. Gonna be right Excellent there. in the air. So you were mentioning the freshmen that get it right away. She's one of those freshmen. She has that excellent air awareness. And I don't know, I just, I, I feel like she's gonna have a kind of a similar start to her career like Selena did. Wow, Selena Harris freshman of the year was ridiculous last year, which went six of those awards in a row to start. And here's Rosen with US national team experience on her resume. Five-time U.S. Championships qualifier, won the floor at the 2022 U.S. Classic. So when you say freshman, you do the air quotes, right? Yeah, air quotes freshman for sure. <laughs> She's competing like a veteran already. Abby Martin, a 9.975 last time out. That means one of the judges thought she was perfect. Now the danger here is to come back and try and replicate that without trying too hard. Exactly. She's gonna do a toe shoot directly into a Maloney. She has great lines, really flows from one skill to the next. This one's gonna be a double layout. Look at her toes squeezed together. And again, just the slightest hop back. Another good routine. And Martin also has three events on her program, including vault and beam. Here's the dismount. That was gorgeous. And sometimes you'll see gymnasts kind of um, separate their legs a little bit on that double layout, but she did a great job. Speaking of perfect, a week ago, Shea Campbell went 995. That's her start value. Yep. On the Yucheco full. That's a perfect score. She's done it many times. She's done it Locked seven it times, I think. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I don't want to say you expect it, but let's just say it's on the table. Yeah. You're going to see right here. Beautiful in the air. <laughs> Finds that stick every single time. She has the power, the height, it's textbook. And the reason why she's able to stick is because she flares out at the end and opens up her hips. And that really just puts you in a good position in the air to really find that landing where you don't have to take a hop. Look at this, like a butterfly. She lands so soft yep. and just holds it. And that's the new rule in college. Can't roll out of your 
your landing. She's got to hold it for the judges. Show them that you can see her nod. Like, yeah, y'all saw that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when you stick one like that, you're in no hurry to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun to see what that mark is. Back to back nine seven seven fives. Bailey McCabe in the four spot for the Jim Cats of the U of A. McCabe, a specialist, 9.825 against Stanford last week. She's gone 9.9 a couple of times last year. Yeah, she is a bar specialist because she's consistent. She has a really nice routine. It's longer than most. Blinds into a Pikes Jaeger. Beautiful in the air. Discount double layout. Landed with her knees a little locked out, so she kind of had to take that hop back, but another good routine for the Gym Cats. She's from Maple Valley, Washington, down at the south end of uh, Lake Washington, just on the east side. 9875. That's is that all they gave Campbell on that? Yeah. Sadly, I can't contest. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to close with two 10 O's, but I, I thought Campbell deserved better than that. Yep. Here's the aforementioned Selena Harris, who is the, well, not only the freshman of the year, but one of the best gymnasts in the country last year. She is spectacular because of that reason. And she just has incredible block off the horse, which is why she's able to get so much height and rotation to pull that one and a half around so clean. She's ranked 13th in the country on this event. She just had the slightest scooch forward. You could tell she was trying to find that stick. Yeah, she had a 9.95 earlier this year. Had a 9.9 last week against UW in this building. Three straight 9.775s. So it's up to Sophie Dur now to change that around. They need a bigger number here. Got to keep pace with UCLA early on. You know, it would be a, it'd be a tall order for Arizona to beat UCLA, but if Arizona had a meet like last week, and UCLA did not, that gap closes quickly. Yep. And I believe Sophie is the perfect gymnast to do that. She has excellent technique, exquisite form. Comes from Frisco, Texas, outside of Dallas, where she was the Texas State Bars champion back in 2021. She's posted back-to-back -back nine nines this year on this event. Beautiful toe shoot to Array. She's going to go down to the low bar in a packed salto. And you can see, as I mentioned, she has beautiful lines. Beautiful extension with her knees and toes. Dismount, half and half out. Other than that step out and the landing, that was a really, really good routine. Here's another look at her dismount. So this is a half in, half out. We were kind of doing the full twist within the two flips. A little off center, so she had to take that step, but. Told you Dura is a freshman. Arizona's kind of top and bottom heavy. They have eight seniors and six freshmen. 9875 again for UCLA. Here's Naya Reed. Naya Reed, the transfer from Florida, was second team All-American on vault last year. Looking for a breakout. 985 her best this year, but she's capable of more. Beautiful ball. One and a half, so it starts from a 10 point down. Excellent. She gets a lot of distance, and you can see she opens up to prepare for the landing, so that's why she was able to find that stick. UCLA season best, a 49-4 on vault. They've done it twice, and they got a chance to reach that number. And you can see right at the end, she opens up those arms. And the face says it all. That's going to be the high mark for UCLA. Nia Reed was awarded a 995. So pressure's on. Great score by Sophie Durr, the 9875. And for Durr, just underneath her career best. Here's Allison Fears, who we talked about at the beginning from Southern California. She's an excellent bar worker. Huge Takacha. Great form. And her handstands are also really good as well because she keeps her hips open and, you know, really looking for that vertical that the judges want to see. 
dismount and double leg. Maybe a little scooch on that landing, but that should be another great score. Not just an upperclassman, but a captain and a leader on this team and super consistent on this event. That's why she's in the anchor spot three times this year. She's got 9-8 with a season high 9-8-5. UCLA just went 49-3-7-5, just below their season best to start the Pride Meet. I'm extremely close to my teammates, so seeing them take a fall is always, it's always a sad thing to watch. But I will say I can draw on my elite experience with that. And I think I'm pretty good at uh, refocusing and dialing in on what I can control, which is my own performance. And of course, when I feel the support from the rest of my team, it's, it's not too hard to get the energy back on track. It's about exactly what I expected. I was expecting um, a lot of joy, a lot of energy within the team, and that's 100% there. I will say it's a little bit more tiring than I was expecting having to compete back to back weekends, but I love every single second of it. So U.S. national team a couple of years ago for Caitlin Rosen, you and I were here last week against Washington twice. She had to come up after falls and one of those, and I believe it was Barnes, they made her wait another minute and a half and yet she kept coming comes through and she said it, it's because of her pedigree yes I think when you come from the elite background it's very more of a rigid environment and very serious and a lot of pressure is put on you as an individual athlete so when someone falls before you it kind of replicates that feeling where you kind of just got to go in and do your job so I think that's what you talked about and you gotta you gotta set the emotion aside you got empathy for your teammate going through a tough time but you got to pick everybody up Rosen did it the UCLA just went 49-375. Rosen had a 9-8-7-5, one of three in a row for UCLA. And then Nia Reed closed it out with the 9-9-5. So just a tick under their season best and a great start for UCLA, wanting to prove that last week was the more accurate number as UCLA went 197-825 at the time, fifth highest in the country. Meantime for Arizona, over on the uh, bars, Arizona got progressively better. Muller started with a 9.75, then three straight 9.775s before Sophie Durr went 9.875, and Allison Fierce closed it in the anchor spot with a 9.9. So for John Court, now in his 26th year in Tucson, just what you want to see from a team that's mixed with freshmen and seniors, getting better as you go along. Of course, this is an annual pride meet here at UCLA, and they're dressed to impress. And actually, Janelle was the one that designed the Leos, and you know she mentioned that they really wanted it to be a safe space for everybody to show up to be celebrated for who they are, and that's what the Pride Meet is about for this weekend. They're excited to give that awareness and celebrate everybody in the LGBTQ plus community. Janelle McDonald, the head coach for UCLA, so not only does she know the sport, but it's got some fashion sense as well, and she was describing to us as she was designing it and then would send it in to the manufacturer and they'd come back, no, that's not exactly right. And then, yeah. said, and then when she got the box, she, she opened said it, it up. it didn't look right. <laughs> yeah. But then she saw Emma Andre's, you know, promotional video for when they had posted earlier. And she said, actually, that looks great. We can wear them today. Turned out <laughs> to look great. And the rhinestones catching the light at Polly, letting you know, special day, Pride Meet at UCLA. And another big crowd inside Polly, along with two teams ranked in the nation's top 20. to be answered for both teams and for Arizona. Are they as good as that 197 from last week? Well, they look pretty good in that first rotation, especially in the anchor spot. Allison Fears, 9-9. She's a great bar swinger, and she actually works smarter, not harder, which really benefits the body, so you're not doing a lot of reps. And I mean, it's really a test to the score that she received at a 9-9. That's a season high for Allison Fears. And you said it before, from Murrieta, which is know, probably an hour from the UCLA campus. If you factor in traffic, it's four hours. She definitely has family in the building. Yeah. And this is what I was, statistically, this is Arizona's weakest event. They average below a 49. They're ranked 33rd in the country. UCLA will move to the bars, where UCLA is nearly a top 20 team, and they might be after today and a 49-3 last week against Washington. And of course, they have Selena Harris in this lineup. She's in the top 10.
Bruins began the season with three straight road quad meets against seven opponents, all ranked in the top six, including number one, Oklahoma, number two, Cal, number three, LSU, Utah, number five, Alabama at six. But this is how the nature of collegiate gymnastics now, because they're doing all these early season quads. Game is recognizing game. You're getting top ranked teams against each other right out of the gate. Yep, and I was speaking with John Cor yesterday, and he said, you know, coming to UCLA is always a, it's always a challenge, but a good challenge because, like you mentioned, two top teams competing against each other. So they're always up for the challenge, and it's really cool that he's always had this consistent mindset going into each meet. I was talking with John before the meet. I asked him why the quick start. He said, well, I don't think we regressed at all from last year. They finished the season ranked 21st in the country, their highest finish in seven years. And he said, you know, in past years, we would drop down and then have to pick up not so much this year. And they also have been killing it on the floor exercise as well. You know, last week they scored that 49-5 range, which is exactly where they want to be come regionals and nationals. And they scored that last week, too, on bars. So they're definitely on that in steady incline as well. Ainsley Creever, the opener on vault for Arizona. Reaver, another of the talented freshmen. Again, they have six freshmen on their roster, and they're they're getting time. In fact, the upperclassmen have kind of fallen into roles as specialists. Once again, here's Shea Campbell. So Campbell going nine eight seven five in the middle of the vault lineup, and she's in the leadoff spot here on bars. And the reason why she's in that leadoff spot. Look at that handstand hold. She really sets the tone for the rest of the bar lineup. She's just so very solid and consistent. Pac-12 Specialist of the Week has gone 9-9. Blind landing for the dismount. Yes. And found it. So I guess now that we've seen her in what are probably going to be her only two events today. We've talked about she's not 100%. She's got a bad calf. Right. But we talked about how, you know, those athletes that are always ready to be put in regardless of the state of the body, and I think that's just a very champion mindset to have rather than, you know, wanting to sit out and let your body rest, but obviously being smart in those choices. But Shea is always someone you can count on. It's going to be interesting to see if she actually stays out of the floor lineup. You know she's going to lobby for it now. Here comes Emma Strom, sophomore from Omaha. Rachenko full. It was a really good fall. All she really needs to do is just open up her hips a little bit to get a better body position. But good form. Yep, if she were to open up her hips, she would take out that hop at the end, and that will bump up her score. Strom has been in two lineups, the vault and the floor, and she will be again today. Now in her second season, she has posted new career highs in both of her events. 9.85 for Campbell. And Frida Esparza. A couple of years ago, she was fourth at the Pac-12s on this event. Did not compete last year. And she's had a little bit of trouble on this event this year. So personally, this is a big moment for her. At home with some momentum. Trying to go clean on the bars. Beautiful Maloney directly connected into a pack salto and truly I think she's one of the best bar workers in the NCAA and I'm happy to see that she's finally letting her light shine. She's dynamic, has the difficulty, fights for that landing. A little wobble on the landing, but you know, I liked at the beginning, it didn't seem like she was rushed. It seemed yep. like she was showing patience early in the routine. Mm -hmm. It's really good to be patient, especially on bars. The last thing you want to do is rush. That's one thing I had to learn, <laughs> swinging bars myself. Another look at her dismount, double layout. Look at Janelle. <laughs> In heels, that's so impressive. I, I, she's got good elevation. She was jumping before, before Freddy even hit the mat. Back to back nine eights. Once again, here comes Martin. Martin had a nine seven seven five on the bars in the first rotation. Gonna see her Chanko full. Got a 9-8 last week, season best. It's a great landing, she gets good distance, really good form in the air as well. Seems very happy with it as well. 
Her mom, Margaret, was an elite and college gymnast in Illinois back in the day. She calls her Abigail, so we will at least once today. <laughs> Teammates call her Abby. You got to keep the moms happy. You must, Just especially keep... if they were also in the sport. It's... Yeah. Or if they have Facebook. <laughs> yeah. You'll hear about it today. 9825 for Esparza here. Once again, is Caitlin Rosen. Rosen went 9875 on the vault. Just beautiful form on the uneven bars. Always 9-8 or better, including a 9-9. She's very fluid, too. Looks very calm up there. Great handstands. Dismount. That's how Janelle waited for the landing before she reacted, and her teammates right there, too. Yeah. Also love her face as she lands too. Just not questioning it. Oh, very stoic. sure of herself. Yep, very stoic. And then lets it go. <laughs> and, then a, and then a dance party. <laughs> Breaks it down afterwards. Good for her. All right, same thing for Arizona. Getting better as they go along. And here's the only 10-0 start value in the lineup, Malia Hargrove. I think it's really cool that, you know, usually you'll see teams throw a 10.0 vault with a one and a half at the end, but they have her in the middle. Hold it, a little step sideways. She's got 9875 or better on every one this year. Just that right foot stepping out. Yep, it was a very dynamic vault though, great form. Could have used a little more block off the horse to help with her rotation, but she was able to find that landing. And like John mentioned, putting her in the middle takes the pressure off. Rosen, 9925. So for Rosen, that is that's a career best for her on vault. By far. Emma Malabuyo and fought it from the beginning. Maybe just a little too geeked up for it. And that is very uncharacteristic. Yeah. Maloney back down to the low bar. What she really needs to do now is just kind of calm those nerves and not try to overcompensate. Great handstand right there. Dismount, half in, half out. And not her best, you know. Yep. Uh, you know, she wasn't in this event at all last year. Rejoined the yep. lineup this year. So, you know, I wonder if there'd be any rust, but if you see 985 out of her, she went 99 at Denver. You know, her shoulders were directly above the bar, but I think she just had too much juice, like you mentioned, and shot her toes instead of directly above her a little past the bar, which brought her over, but she did fight for it. Wow, soft score for Hargrove, only a 9775. I thought it deserved a, a little bit better than that. Uh, Jessica Castles now for the first time today, the senior from England. Your tank of full. Significant hot back, but great form in the air. Her legs are squeezed together, which I love about her gymnastics. Her form is beautiful across the board on the events that she does. So yeah, all she needs to do is just flare out to take out that hop because she has the height, the distance, it's dynamic in the air. So it's really just finding that landing. She missed the season opener, been back in the lineup the last two meets at a 9-8 against Sacramento State. So. In the college gymnastics, six compete, but only five scores. So you can go ahead and erase Malabuyo if the others all come through, beginning with Marzetta Frazier, a former Pac-12 champion on this event. So if you need somebody up after a fall, I don't know you can do better than Mars. She's so aggressive on the uneven bars. You can just tell with her tap. A little bit short on her handstands. Double layout. She tried to hold that landing before taking that step, so we'll see what the judges do with that. 
Mars had a 9875 at Vegas earlier this year, but yeah, that's the new, uh, the old college stick is out, can't roll out of your landing. Yeah, you gotta it. hold it for three seconds. So right now, Arizona looking to drop Hargrove's 9775 as everybody else is 98 or better. And once again, Fears in the anchor spot, and they're asking her to come through one more time. You can go full. She was really good in the air. It was really the landing. She was kind of stumbling a little bit. Last week uh, against Stanford, they were good early on in the meet, so there was no rally. They just kept posting good scores across the board. 9.875 for Frazier. Told you she's clutch. And now you're going to hand it off to Harris. So all of a sudden, Malabuyo's score in the middle is starting to fade because you expect Harris to post a big number. And they'll take those five. I love how you said expect Harris to put up a big number because she's just exceptional. <laughs> but she's uh, top 10 on this event right now in the country. 9975 at Wasatch last year was her best. She's got 995 at Vegas, 99 last week at Washington. Hey, it's her fault she spoiled us last year. She really did. First team all Pac-12 on all five events as a freshman. Huge Perfect. Re huge release move coming up. Beautiful Ray, and she's holding those handstands like she did last week. Yep. And once again, difficult connection, full pirouette, finishes in handstand, double layout, and sticks that. <laughs> one. Judges are going to have to sharpen the pencil. <laughs> that was pretty good. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say the T word yet. I mean, the handstands were impressive because they were completely vertical and she held them. Right. One thing I have noticed when it's a perfect score, it comes up very quickly. Have you noticed that? When it's, it's a 10, they don't really... Judges look at each yeah. other and nod, yeah. <laughs> that was certainly gonna be north of 995, right? 995 they gave her, yeah. Yeah. Well, still early in the season, judges gotta leave themselves room to grow. UCLA halfway home, at home, with a lead over number... So Allison Pierce tiptoed out of that landing and they dinged her for it, only a 9.725. They end up dropping that score, which you don't often see in the anchor spot. Still end up with a score above 49. They were averaging under a 49, so it's actually above average for them and right on their season best. Actually, it is a season high for them, 49.025. So Arizona survives that vault and from here, Arizona very good in the second half of the season. UCLA on bars went 49-425. Selena Harris with the 995 in the anchor spot. UCLA got better as it worked along. John Court joins us now. 26 years in Tucson, John. So let's talk about last week against Stanford. You go 197. So that's a season high for you guys. You put up a program best on bars. I think a season high on beam. And it was spread out. You had, you had people getting season highs and career highs. What did you like most about coming out of that Stanford meet last week? You know, we had to come out and make sure we control the controllables, Jimmy. Uh, and I think for us coming in, coming into UCLA, obviously you want to make more routines than you miss. But ultimately, we want to stick with the goals that we have in the gym. There's a huge board. We're trying to hit more handstands, stick more stick more dismounts, show off our dance, obviously get our make sure that we're executing at a really, really high level. But most importantly, we want the team to have fun. They're, cer they're certainly doing that today. They're, you know, more or less, they're 12 out of 12 or 14 out of 14 over the first two events. So we just want to continue that momentum. And many teams change up their focus slash objective every meet, but you've kept yours consistent. Can you speak on that consistency and where it's gotten your team currently? Well, I think if you, if you stay consistent, good things are going to happen. I don't believe in reinventing the wheel from week to week. So all season long, you know, after the first meet, we wanted to make sure that we could pick up where we left off after last year's regional. And we have a lot of upperclassmen, and the freshmen are really dialed in. So um, I'm, I'm blessed. I have, I, have, I have a great group. We just, we just want to keep it going, keep the momentum going. I think this team really doesn't have 
have any limits. The score is going to keep going up and up throughout the season and uh, hope it's going to be one of the most memorable seasons in Arizona gymnastics history in 2024. John, a couple of years ago, you and I sat down at McHale before a meet and you explained to me the goal sheet where you put 25 categories down on paper, none of them involving scoring. Uh, are you still doing that? And explain it a little bit. Well, we're still doing that because the thing is we, I can feel and they can feel like they executed a fantastic routine and you should be happy with that as an athlete. We go out, you do, you, do, you do all the things that you have to do, you do all the things that we have in the gym, and then it's up to the official to give you the score. So sometimes the score doesn't equal to what the feeling is of the athlete or the coach. But as long as we're doing the things that we want to do, we got to be happy with that. Because then we're just going to do it again and again and again. We have to have that consistency. Beautiful. Thank you for your time as always, John. It's always great to see you. And uh, congratulations on the great start. Keep it going, man. <laughs> John Court, 26th season in Tucson, now the sixth season as the solo head coach. And halfway through, 98-125, and UCLA sitting at 98-8. So we wondered if UCLA can back up that big score from last week, the 197-825. They are on track to do just that, and they're coming into their strongest events. Caitlin Rosen may only be a freshman. We told you about how she always seems to come through when UCLA needs a good score, and she did that on the bars in the middle of the lineup with a 9.925. And since she's a freshman, that's not just a season high. Automatically, it's a career high. Beautiful, great bar routine. And again, we talked about her elite background, so they really know how to count on her and her consistency to hit when she needs to hit. So now all four of her scores this year have been at least 9-8. Good way to start your career. And while we were playing it back, she continues to dance. Like, it's always been the thing here at UCLA. And in fact, you heard John Court saying about Arizona, too. I think gymnasts are better when they're allowed to just be free, be themselves. Agreed, agreed. And I keep ref referencing the elite background, but it's so serious in that world. So when they're able to just be free and be themselves and have fun, they're just able to come out of their shell and let it's, their light shine. It's not football, Janae. It's you can not. have fun, right? <laughs> in fact, uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, and gymnasts know this one, but for neophytes like me, we love this old T-shirt or poster. It would say, if gymnastics were easy, it would be called football. I did have yeah. a sweatshirt that said that, yes. <laughs> and then I tried a football workout, and I wanted to redact my statement. <laughs> well, they're outside in the sun. <laughs> UCLA is on pace right now for a 197.6, which would be just below last week's season high, 197.825. But they have balance beam, where last week they went 49.5, and they have floor, where last week they went 49.625. So another season high is well within reach. And just like we started the meet on vault, first up on the beam, Emily Lee. The lead off. So punny. <laughs> Two times, 9-9, nine, nine, the Super 16, and then again last week. Back in the day, she finished eighth on this event at the U.S. Olympic Trials. She's such a solid beam worker, very calm and confident up there, something that she's worked really, really hard on, especially as an underclassman, but now she has competitions under her belt. She's able to smile. She really hits that 180 split that the judges are looking for. Extremely flexible. We talk about UCLA's floor, but you know, they're the beam queens here, right? Beam queens, you know, yes. they, there was a section of, of time where they won the balance beam NCAA championship four consecutive years. Sam Peshek, Danusha Francis, Kyla Ross, Peng Peng Lee. Arizona will finish on the beam, so here in the third rotation on the floor. Check this out. 
split ring full. That's a really difficult jump to do right off the bat before tumbling. Beautiful torture tape full into a popa. And I know we haven't seen it yet, but the elegance you'll see on balance beam is exactly what she brings to floor. Deets on floor this year, all three have been 9.825 or better. Season I, 9.875 against Stanford last week. I-925 for Emily Lee. Nice start on beam. So that is a season high for Lee, not a career high. Balance check for Caitlin Rosen. Quick lay, right on. She's very strong on this event. She has a confident energy, very precise in her dance elements. Dismount, round off, one and a half. Had to take that step back. She's not super happy about it, reading her face, but. I think it's because she knows she could do better. Yeah, you can't hide it on beam. It's the loneliest place in Westwood. 985 for Dietz. Fierce, who's been at the back end of two lineups now, near the top on floor. Nine nine earlier this year against Sacramento State, a nine eight five in the quad up in Salt Lake City. Very powerful gymnast. She's going to start off with a double tug, with a lot of height. Step back if it stays in. Yes, but they will stay in bounds. No flag. combination pass to finish it off. Yeah, for your final tumbling pass, fatigue sets in and focus starts to waver. Look pretty good. Fatigue definitely sets in. I can confirm that. <laughs> That's a long 90 seconds, isn't it? Look at this first pass. Double tuck way up in the air, and she was able to stay in bounds. I think the judges will only take off for her front foot sliding a little bit. 
not having complete control of that landing, but that was a good fight to stay in bounds to not count that extra 10. 975 for Rosen. Emma Andres. She says this is her favorite event, and it shows in the numbers. 9-9 nine, nine, and a 985 already this year. The 985 was last week. And she's a beautiful beam worker, and she's taking full advantage of her fifth year. And it really shows in her performance. She's very solid, very clean. And this meet in particular is very special to her. She believes gymnastics has become more accepting and inclusive over the years. So UCLA hosting a pride meet and wearing pride Leo to celebrate queer gymnasts is a huge step to her and she loves it. UCLA student section right behind her and reacting to each of the aerials. Front toss to swing down. You don't see that too often. Dismount, round off, double full. Usually you see gymnast doing a one and a half. She did have to take that step, but she does perform that really beautifully. Andre's multi-talented, not just a gymnast, but plays guitar, piano, ukulele, wants to be a conservationist. We need those. Deets and Fears, 985's excellent start for Arizona on the floor. They're ranked 11th in the country. This is their best event. They're averaging a 49-4. So this is Arizona's chance to put the rally caps on. Starting out with little uh, Dexy's Midnight Runners from Scotland. This routine is very fun and entertaining. And I love her performance quality, her face expressions. Really big in her movements. to a layout step out. Great first pass. And I'm also speaking with head coach John Court, he told me that Emma is the most improved gymnast from last year to this year. Worked really hard on upgrading her skills, honing in on those details and consistency, which is what John looks for. Another look at that combination, one and a half to front full. Because most of the time you see a one and a half to a front layout, so adding that extra twist in there just gives them more difficulty. It was beautiful stuff. I, I even knew most of those songs, Janae. Here's how to tell if you're getting older. I also older. knew it a couple. As long as you, they're still using it here, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's when you hear your old music at the grocery store. That's oh, when you that's know you're getting tough. old. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. I feel like grocery <laughs> stores are coming with the times, though. <laughs> 9775 for Andres. Once again, here's Selena Harris. Like we mentioned so many times before, she's known for her consistency and she's excellent on beam. Well, she's already had a 9875 on vault and closed out the bars rotation with a 995. So she's she's having a wonderful day. Beautiful triple series that she seems to hit every single time. Beautiful leap connection directly into her full turn. She's just very inspiring to watch, an all-around gymnast. Front toss. I even remember speaking with her last year and how competing doesn't make her nervous and you just see that day in and day out. She oh. found that stick again. Look at her teammates. Check out the student <laughs> section. And then all eyes will go to the scoreboard. 
she's only ranked 34th in the country, but she's gone 995, 99. I mean, I think it's got to match bars at the very least, but we'll see. See, I told you, she spoiled us last year, so now you expect it. Look, Mars yeah. is over there saying, yeah, see, I know. That's an upperclassman showing the kid how it's done. Oh, I like this chain. I'm just now noticing. Is, is this new? It it looks new. It looks... All right, we got to find out about that. Fresh from the jewelry shop, you know? <laughs> just so confident, so steady, no problem. You never want to say they make it look easy, but you you want to you want to say it looks effortless. Uh, and I'll tell you what, she did get a one perfect judge, score from one judge. One judge though. Still a nine nine seven five. But here's so the thing: I don't like when the crowds boo at a nine nine seven five because they didn't get the ten. You still gotta you still gotta react to the nine nine seven five. Yeah. I get it. The home folks wanted a perfect score, but that that's phenomenal. Cheer it. Back to floor and back to Muller. This is her best event. Three times she's gone 9875 or better, including a 9925. It's another fun routine to watch. Starting off with the double pike. Got to dance on and off the sting mat there. No time to pull it. to do. Yeah. I feel like I'm in musical theater right now. This is great. is for an old soul as well. Oh, absolutely. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you said it. It was like musical theater because she was dancing mm -hmm. to the music. You kind of got pulled in on it. And again, you feel like you're you're watching a performance rather than a competition. Right. Harris with the nearly perfect 9975. Here's Emma Malabuya. We think this was a long wait from bars to here for Emma. Right, get right back on it. This is a gymnast on the balance beam that has, I think, the best confidence and presentation. Just outside the top 20 in the individual rankings. 995 at Denver. Her scores have been rising each week. So if you've already got 995, that doesn't leave much room to go above it. Dismount, back handspring, gain or full. Uh oh. Make sure to get those heels together. They are mobbing her, and the beam isn't going to stand in anybody's Here comes way. The chain. And let me tell you, she's had a 10 before against UC Davis a couple of years ago. Right here in this building on that beam. So the judges may be feeling a little pressure after not giving it to Harris. I definitely think they should feel the pressure, especially after this routine. Oh, she stuck that landing completely. Just owned it. It was on lock the whole time. Let's see. One judge is ready. Quite a contrast after the, the fall on bars 45 minutes ago. Had to wait through a couple of rotations. Came back and made the most of it. That infectious smile. Everybody loves Emma. Now you just got to wait and see how much love the judges give her. 9875 for Muller. Great scores for Arizona. Look at that. 
875, beautiful stuff. <laughs> Caroline Harry, senior from Argyle, Texas, three times has got 985 or better on floor, including a couple of 99s. Listen to the background for that meme score. Another big double tuck to start off the routine. She's always dialing in on those landings. Doesn't want to give the judges a thing to take when it comes to the tumbling part of the routine. I'm starting to see why Arizona is number 11 in the country on this event, averaging the 49-4. They've had the same score in all three meets, 49-4. Which is a great range to be in. Yeah. Malibu, Malibu just the 9925. I guess it was at the beginning of the routine because she closed like gangbusters. Yeah. So now they want to drop Rosen's 975, and it's up to the specialist, Sienna Lipio, who went 99 last week, a season high. a layout step out, beautiful series connection. Slight balance check on that full turn, but I think she covered it up very well. performs it so well and even just seeing the smile on her face I got to say hi to her earlier and she is the sweetest human being nine nine yep. for Harry the nine nine on floor ties a season best for Harry Malia Hargrove who was an NCAA finalist on floor back in 21 is just as good now. Three times she's gone 9875 or better. It's gonna open up with a huge tumbling pass and E. Full in. Glad she was able to land on that sting mat. Barely made it. Another intricate pass. Whip half to a front full. You rarely see whip halves anymore these days. Check this out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, 
ruined fans no floor, so if you get a reaction out of them, you, you know? you've done something. I mean, if you're already tumbling, why not have a dance element on your head? <laughs> Double tap. Nice. Huge height. NCAA finalist from three years ago now. And she's still great on floor. I saw this in warm up and I said, oh, I need to pin this in the broadcast. Yeah, <laughs> glad you did. I wonder how that came to be, that. you know? That's awesome. I wonder if they were just in the mirror, like what's something cool we could do? Great rotation on the floor for Arizona. Right on their average again, a 49-375, and maybe better than that. Hey, wake up, you're missing a good meet. He looks like our producer. <laughs> that last rotation, both teams put up season highs. Arizona went 49-4-5 on floor. So get this for scores this year for Arizona on floor. 49-4, 49-4, 49-4, 49-4-5. But don't overshadow UCLA on beam, who last week put up a season high 49-5 on beam and just beat it again. And as you pointed out, they carried a low score. Yeah, so imagine if they brought that 9-7-7-5 to even a 9-8-2-5 or a 9-8-5. So they can very easily score in that 49-6, maybe even 49-7 range. So. Wow. And that would be another season high team total because they're sitting at 148-325. Last week, 197-825. I know it's a lot of numbers, but that's how the rankings are done in gymnastics. And UCLA coming off a hot beam rotation, now going to the floor where they're ranked fourth in the country. And who's going to lead them over to the floor? Well, the greatest choreographer in the conference, BJ Doss, maybe one of the best in the country, long been considered one of the most innovative in all of gymnastics. And she's created viral floor routines every year, and she's been in Westwood. We had a chance to talk with the great BJ Doss before the meet today. BJ, can you walk me through it? How do you develop uh, a brand new floor routine? Say it's a freshman. Do you start with the gymnast personality? Do you start with a song? Do you start with a theme or an idea? How does it all come together? All of the above, actually. Um, it really starts with the person, the human, who they are, what they're about, what their preferences are in terms of movement and style and music. And then it kind of comes together from there. So we start with the music. Um, I take hours. They take hours. We really like try to come up with a really clear theme and message. And then we get in the studio. We play around. Uh, we have fun together. And then it just slowly evolves into a floor team. And I want to know how you continue to elevate. So Shay, who's a senior, and her routine was amazing as a freshman. But you just continue to elevate. Where do you pull from your your inspiration because you continue to evolve as a choreographer as well. Thank you, first of all. Um, Shay's amazing. She loves to dance. Uh, she came in as a freshman, just so bought in to the process of creating, and she wanted to elevate. So um, I am really lucky to have a team that's really bought into um, creating impactful performances, um, and Shay is just a perfect example of that. She came in as a freshman, ready to go, ready to be challenged and grow as a dancer and performer. Um, and then every year we just try to find something that really is close to her heart um, and continue to bring the best out of her. And she's just grown as a performer as well, just through experience and um, all the dance classes that she's taken and the training that she's done with me and a lot of other people. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this year for her. And having a big dance background, what's the most rewarding aspect of coaching for you? Um, definitely bringing my worlds together. Like I just feel so grateful that I get to do that with a team like UCLA. Um, I get to bring a lot of my experience from the industry to uh, like a sports program. Um, and I just feel like they are so willing to learn and they're so willing to be challenged. And so my favorite part is taking people that love to perform and just making them even larger than life. So I've, I've been having a blast. BJ, we've always talked about that on the air. For, for many years, we followed you around uh, that when you're a Corey choreographing a, a floor, it seems like it's more of a performance than a competition. How do you blend it together? 
I think if it starts with the performance and it starts with the fun, then the competitiveness comes out. That's already in them. They've been doing this sport for years and they love to compete. So I think at the root of it, if they're exuding joy and love for what they do, the best is gonna naturally come out. All right, we'll get you out of here on this. So Nia Dennis, Jordan Childs, Shea Campbell, Paulina Trotz, they all won with you. Uh, Gracie Kramer, Campbell Childs, they've all had tens. Uh, what's your favorite one? I can't pick a yeah. favorite. <laughs> oh, man. I they're, knew that was unfair. It's like your kids, right? They, they're, they're all special. Yeah, yeah, they're all my kids. No, I, I, um, I love them all for different reasons. Um, I like the ones that take a risk. I like the ones that feel really authentic to who they are. Um, and honestly, all the ones that you named are that. So um, I definitely, I can't pick a favorite. I love dancing on the sidelines with them. And so I think that, um, yeah, all of them, really. BJ, we always say it when we come to a UCLA meet that the, the feature is always the floor. It's the end of it. So thanks for all your great work and, and making it so interesting and making it a performance. It's a, so much fun to watch your stuff. Thank you. Thanks. That means a lot. BJ Doss has worked, you know, she talked about her worlds colliding. It's not just gymnastics, but she's worked with some of the biggest entertainers. Beyonce, Usher, who I think is doing the Super Bowl, right? Yep. Uh, Pink, Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, Nicki Minaj. She performed at the Grammys, so she certainly knows her stuff. And y you wouldn't even have to look. It, it, just watching the floor, you'd say, oh, that's that's got BJ Doss's signature all over it. So UCLA sitting on a 148-325. All they need is a 49-5 to tie their season best. Fourth quarter floor party. We come back to Polly on the Pac-12 Network. Now this is why half of these people in this building come into Polly on a rainy Sunday because they want to see the floor rotation by one of the best programs in collegiate gymnastics on their best event. UCLA is ranked fourth in the country. And this is the one that always brings down the house. This is where they rally. But they don't have to today. Now they're just trying to close in on a season best. A lot of big teams in action, including number one, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma put up another big score in a try meet. You had the Maroon Monsoon down in, uh, in Tempe. How about uh, ASU going 197-250 in California? Also in the Pac-12, number two in the country, right behind Oklahoma. Uh, Utah, we were there at Huntsman Center on Friday night. Miley O'Keefe went 10 again on the beam. That's 13 times in her career she's gotten a 10 on the balance beam. It's incredible. That's ridiculous. And then LSU beat number seven Arkansas. So that was a nice matchup there. And they two went deep into 198 with 475. That is the highest score in collegiate gymnastics so far. Final rotation for Arizona brings them to the beam. And this too is a strongly ranked event for the Jim Cats of the U of A, 14th in the country. So everything but vault, Arizona is ranked top 15. And overall, they're the 18th ranked team in the country. All good numbers early in the season for John Court, who's got a balanced lineup with eight seniors and six freshmen. Caroline Harry on the beam. Caroline just went 9-9 on floor, holds on to that one. She's actually a co-captain. There's three captains on this team this year, and after speaking with John yesterday, he mentioned that she is one of the few people he knows who is very in touch with who she is, with life and with Jim. You meet her and you know exactly what you're gonna get. Little um, balance check. Former Texas State champion on this event and, and really broke out. You know, she would get modest scores for a couple of years. Last year was a breakout for her and, and now she's held that level as a senior. And you can even just see the focus in her face. Dismount, backhand spring one and a half. You know, it was a quiet performance. She seemed to be in her element. I didn't have much problem with it. It was clean. Yeah, very, very clean. And now it all changes. This is the contrast from the 
the sedate, quiet beam. Then you go over and it's just chaos and a Mardi Gras <laughs> on the floor. And you start with Emma Malabuyo. And Everyone believe me, she dancing. loves being on this floor. Yes. In, even the leaps were really solid. That should be a really, really good score. Even in the leadoff spot, I didn't see much wrong with it. Here's her first pass right here. Double tuck. And just look how dialed in she is on the landing. Hard to tell who's having more fun, Emma or the students behind her? I was also having fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, you, you just get sucked into it. Right. 9775 for Carolyn Harry. Emily Muller. Earlier, Muller had a 975 on bars and a 9875 on floor. And she is just a natural beam worker. Side aerial to a layout step out. Very difficult series connection. Last week, Arizona had four gymnasts with career highs and four gymnasts with season highs. Muller was included in that group on this event with a 9875. I love that you said that because speaking with John, he mentioned that any milestone that this team has accomplished since she's been here, she's been involved. She's been one to score those points. John Court in the background with the arms folded, trying to pretend like he's calm. <laughs> How can you remain calm during balance beam? It's tough. Round up one and a half. Excellent. And she held it, too. And Muller ends up in the arms of her coach, Taylor Spears, who's in her sixth season in Tucson. And Spears knows beam. Back in 2014, she was the national champion for Oklahoma on this event. Here's Taylor Spears. I think she came in right after John was named interim head coach. Yep. So she's been there six years. And the key is they've gotten better on each beam each year. And you got to be patient on beam as you build up the roster. 9925 for Malabuyo once again. Emma Andres. And Andres added into the lineup right before we went on the air because Shea Campbell and that calf opened up a spot. Two and a half to a punch front, and she stuck that landing. Well, it's been a while since Emma's been on floor. Yeah. Not this year. She's also a great dancer, very entertaining to watch.
were talking to DJ about a country routine and finally hear some country music mixed into Emma's routine. Well, that's a big moment and that's a breakthrough. Yeah. She hasn't been on floor since the Morgantown, West Virginia Regional Final, April 3rd of 2021. Now, she had an exhibition last year, but in terms of scoring competition, it's been almost three years. Yeah, and I'm shocked you mentioned that. You said Beam is her favorite event because it looks like she enjoys floor so <laughs> much as well. And she's such a natural mover. I love watching her dance, and you can tell that anything DJ throws at her, she delivers. Muller with a 9.85 on Beam, just below her season best. Jessica Castles. Castles on beam. Last two meets only was not in the opener. Nine, eight, two fives. Had a wobble, but she was able to hold on to it and stay on the beam. What I love the most about Jessica's gymnastics is her toe point. She has exquisite form on this event. Yeah, everything over-exaggerated, big movements, filling up the arena. Front aerial to Sassone. She had a really good preseason, but her back flared up a little bit, so that's why she's uh, now coming into the lineup. Double wolf. Right on, with the yeah. finger flick of the choreography. One and a half. Hold on to it. You held it. <laughs> <laughs> Had to fight the momentum both directions. <laughs> Castle's best this year on the beam. Only a 9.825, so she's got a chance to eclipse that. Career best 9.925, just like Andre's just got on floor. Back to back 9.925s. Caitlin Rosen. Already in character, and watch as she casts a spell on you. Rosen made her debut against Washington last week. Beautiful double A. Flirted with the line a little bit. She stayed in. favorite part right here. It just gives me chills every time. and the student section all as one and with their hand in the air. You saw a lot of BJ's influence there, all those performance elements that yes. come into gymnastics, right? She has a huge double layout to start off the routine. Again, the stoic face. <laughs> Gets me every time. 975 for Castles. Lena Dietz. Dietz has been good all year on this event. All three of her routines, 9-8 or better, had a 9-9-2-5. That's a career high against Stanford last week. Mm 
Little bit of a lean balance check right there. This is another co-captain right here. And this will be her best year yet as a senior. She's really grown in her artistry. It's great, phenomenal leadership. Great beamer. Pitch kick to switch side. Beautiful extension with the knees and the toes. Both teams came into the final rotation needing a 49-5 for season best. In gymnastics, the score matters more than the win-loss record. Switch leap, gainer, lay full. Hold on to it, now. Yeah. Yeah, this is the best Arizona team we've seen in five years, and they were pretty good last year. Top 20 team, Brooklyn Moores, averaging the 9925 on the floor, which is seventh best in the country. Next up for UCLA. She was number 18 last week, jumped all the way up to number seven. All four of her scores, 9-9 nine, nine or better, has had a 9-9-5 nine, nine, twice. She tried to hang on to it, but she had to step out of bounds. So that'll be a 10th extra deduction. Yep. She tells a story. It's amazing. Beautiful artistry. The best artistic gymnast, I think, in the NCAA. Yeah, unfortunately, she's getting a date for stepping out of bounds. I'd love to be in those early meetings when VJ sits down with a gymnast and says, okay, here's the story. And she gives them the character and what they're, they're going through, the adversity, and just see how that gymnast becomes that character and, yep. then, and then has to actually go out and do it on the floor. 9.85 for Dietz. Good rotation here to close out the meet for Arizona. Again, they just needed a 49.5 for a new season best. <laughs> Abby Martin's been good on the beam. All 9.8 or better this year. Beam rotation has been very good, but all of the athletes have had slight balance checks in their routines. So once they tighten those up, we'll see those nine sevens become nine eights and they'll be in a better score range. But being a freshman, she has very calm energy up there. She is very clean. can just tell she's a great competitor. Dismount, one and a half. Have to take that step to the side. Low score so far on being for Arizona is the opener by Airy at uh, 9775. So having a good rotation again, you can drop your low score. Meet time for UCLA last week. Their lowest score on any event was a 49-3. Tonight, their lowest score is a 49-375. 
Moore's got just the 9725 stepping out, but they close with Harris and Reed. So he's season best still, well within reach. Harris, top 25 of the country on this event. Tied a career high earlier this season, 995 at Denver. Last week just missed tying that score. in the air on those leaps. Goodness. She had to wait for the floor to come back to her. <laughs> wow. Stag was seven feet off the ground. Awesome. That was so good. If anything, maybe on the double tuck, but she held it really well. How high is she here? Just so <laughs> high off the ground. I mean, when she opens up, she's still four feet off the ground. <laughs> Wait for it. And so much power coming from those legs. More than two, two years of this. Yeah. <laughs> UCLA's annual pride meet. She's going to celebrate with her classmates. Oh, she's going up in the stands. You must. Love it. <laughs> and then the contrast over on beam where you try to calm everything down. Abby Martin 9-7, so they'll want to drop that score. And that's the task for Allison Fears as she closes out the meet for the Gym Cats. She's had a 9.875 on beam this year. Needs a breakout score, something 9.9 or above. Oh, bounce check. She is very elegant and clean on this event. She's got to clean up those balance checks and she'll definitely see her scores pop this year for sure. And she loves being in the all around. You know, most gymnasts, they have their not so favorite event, but she loves them right. all. And she's actually a criminal criminology major. Got a 4.0 across the board last year, and she will be interning at a police station this summer, which should be interesting, says her coaches. High GPAs with gymnasts, the norm, not the exception. Beautiful dis dismount to finish it off. Harris goes 9975. So second time today that one of the judges. She's gives flirting, a 10. Yeah. flirting with the 10. Right there. Well, UCLA already has a 49-5, so they have tied their season high. And it falls to Nia Reed to push it over the top. Lots of that energy. Be better than team. what a 9925, right? Is yeah. will drop more. So yep. yeah, she needs to take down one of the 9925s. She can absolutely do that. Huge double layout. All she's got to do is just dial in on those landings, and we'll see the score we need from her. Before she came to Westwood, she had two tens for Florida on this event. You 
know this song. Sure. <laughs> I'm watching her teammates as much as her because they're just mirroring everything she's doing. Her teammates and the student section. Up goes the confetti. Come on now. Well, I think it's safe to say that Janelle McDonald and the Bruins just put up another season high, but we'll wait for the official numbers. The question is, how good was that by Nia Reed? It's definitely better than a 9.725. Her season best is a, a 9.925, which she had twice. But all of her scores have been at least 9.9. -9. One judge has given her a 10. We don't know the score of the other judge yet. One 10 is already in. Let's see. Wait for it. They gave it to her. They didn't give it to her. They did not. Oh. So close. Second judge was a 9.95. It averages out to a 9.975. 49.75. What a way to close. So the last, the last two floors for UCLA, each one had a perfect score, but you need two. Another season best day for UCLA. We'll add up the numbers, give you the totals. We come back to the pro The rain is starting to fall. Pineapple Express coming through Southern California, but inside it's been a party all day long. Look at what UCLA just did on the floor. 49.75 is the second highest score in the country this year on that event behind LSU who went 49.775. It all adds up to a 198.075. Well, we were looking for another big 197. They hit 198. Bruins are back. They are back. That's what I said. Uh, and Selena Harris leading the charge again. Selena joins us now on headset. Selena, I'm going to give you your scores for the day. 9875 on vault. 995 on bars, 9975 on beam, and a 9975 on floor. That's a 39775 career Yay. best all around. Congratulations. Yay. How did Thank you do you. it? Oh my, I don't know. I just like, <laughs> it was the pride meet, so it was extra exciting because I get to feel more like myself and be open and express myself, especially alongside with my teammates. So it was just a lot of fun. Like we just could feel the energy and just, I don't know, feel the spirit with everybody. So it was so exciting. It was the best day ever, Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Loki. I, specifically on balance beam, it seemed like you were overcome with emotion. Can you tell me about just that emotion that, oh, that just takes over when you dismount and finish your routine yeah I I've been struggling to stick or to stick everywhere really so I was just really proud of myself that I was able to stick the landing today because I was really getting I was getting very hard on myself throughout training to make sure I stick it today and I did that so I was very proud of myself so so you, you know what everybody's asking at home do you think you deserve the 10 on either of the last two events I think I deserve a 10 everywhere <laughs> agree. You better claim that. I know that's right. That a girl. Hey, hey uh, you, you had a great freshman year last year. Can you get better each season? Is it going to be like that or is that what we're looking at? Oh, yeah. I was kind of nervous because I was like, I don't think my floor team tops last year, but it does. And like, that's the goal to be so much better than the year before. So great job. So that's perfect. <laughs> All right, take that headset off and go look for a 10. Thank you. Thanks, looking. Guys. Wow, what an amazing performance by Selena Harris. 39775, a career best for her. UCLA at Oregon State on February 9th. Arizona going home to face number two California. Cats put up a 196-525. They went 49-45 on floor, a season high. For Alan Brum, your producer, Tim Lay, your director, and my partner, Janae Honest, I'm Jim Watson saying so long from Poly Pavilion, where UCLA continues to get better each week.